What's up guys, drafting wide receivers is never an easy task. Sure, we have seen many highly touted college wideouts go on to have remarkable NFL careers. Julio Jones and Calvin Johnson are just a few of the names that come to mind. Sometimes, however, these pass catchers are so dominant and athletically gifted as college players, it seems like they're destined for a Hall of Fame career. But once it came to turning professional, these guys just weren't able to find that same level of success. I'm Jason Biondo, and today we present 10 wide receivers who were great in college, but major bust in the NFL. Don't don't forget to leave your video ideas down below. We'll be looking, and if we choose your idea, we'll give you a shout out in the video. Make sure to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video. Subscribe. Number 10, Antonio Bryant. We should have Brian a bit higher on this list, but he did have two very good seasons in the NFL. Not only that, but he was actually a second round pick. But compare Brown's college career to his time in the NFL. There's quite a difference. Brian played college at Pittsburgh and was one of the most dominant offensive players in the country at the time. Brian was named to the first all-team Big East twice. The Dallas Cowboys drafted Brian in the second round, 63rd overall in 2002. Now we hit the 1,000 yard mark with the Cleveland Browns in 2005 and with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2008, winning the comeback play of the year award that same year. But a series of injuries unfortunately hit Bryant hard, and the Bucks cut him in 2010 after a frustrating 2009 season. He signed with the Cincinnati Bengals and Seattle Seahawks, but never wound up playing for them. Number nine, Corey Coleman. One day, Corey Coleman may be higher on this list, but he's still playing in the NFL. So for all we know, he'll end up becoming a late bloomer, rather than being a huge draft bust. Still, Coleman's first three seasons in the NFL weren't exactly inspiring. He was a consensus All-American. In his final year of college, Coleman had 74 receptions for 1,300 63 yards and 20 touchdowns. He had future NFL star written all over him. The Cleveland Browns drafted Coleman 15th overall in 2016, but had injuries limit him in his rookie and sophomore years. In two seasons with the Browns, Coleman compiled a total of 56 catches for 718 yards and five touchdowns. He was traded to the Buffalo Bills in 2018, only to get released. He signed with the New England Patriots, only to get released. Finally, he signed with the New York Giants in 2018 and stayed with them. Hopefully, Coleman can turn it around, but so far, he looks nothing like the guy who made a opponents look silly in college. Number 8, Josh Reed. The crafty 5'10", 210-pound wideout played three seasons at LCU. After a strong sophomore year, Reed performed nicely in his third and final college season, notching 94 receptions for 1,740 yards and seven touchdowns. In 2001, he was named a consensus All-American selection, and he was named to the first team All-SEC twice. Reed was drafted by the Buffalo Bills in the second round, 36th overall. But unfortunately, Reed wasn't able to bring his college success over to the NFL level. He only started 52 games over his eight NFL seasons, all with the Bills. Reed's best season was in 2008 when he had 56 receptions for 597 yards and one touchdown. He left the Bills after the 2009 season and signed with the San Diego Chargers in 2010, only to be released. And with that, Reed was out of the NFL for good. Number seven, Troy Williamson. The Minnesota Vikings clearly thought big things of Troy Williamson. They had traded perennial pro bowler franchise icon and future Hall of Famer Randy Moss to the Oakland Raiders in exchange for their 2005 first and 7th round picks. Minnesota used Oakland's first round pick 7th overall on the South Carolina wideout. Williamson posted solid numbers in college, breaking out in his 3rd and final season with 43 receptions for 835 yards and 7 touchdowns. As a bonus, Williamson was also a special teams returner. Unfortunately, Williamson just wasn't able to produce at the NFL level. No injuries, no off the field issues, none of it. He just wasn't the impact player that Minnesota had hoped he would be. Williamson recorded a total of just 79 receptions for 1,067 yards and 3 touchdowns in a trio of seasons. He spent bits of two seasons with the Jacksonville Jaguars, but Williamson only caught eight passes for 64 yards and one touchdown there. He was out of the NFL after the 2009 season and simply went down as one of the biggest draft disappointments of the 2000s. Number six, Troy Edwards. The Louisiana Tech star had one of the greatest college seasons ever in 1998. He caught a draw-dropping 140 receptions for 1,996 yards and wait for it, wait for it, 27 touchdowns. Yeah, we're serious. He earned a consensus All-American selection as well. The Pittsburgh Steelers drafted Edwards with the 13th overall pick in 1999, pairing him with the future franchise legend of Heinz Ward, who signed this. Actually, that's him. Hey, cheers, Heinz. Get him in. Edwards had a promising rookie year, finishing with 61 catches for 714 yards and five touchdowns. But it was all downhill from there. He never came close to those stats again and lasted just two more years in Pittsburgh. Edwards played briefly for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Detroit Lions, and St. Louis Rams as well. For his career, Edwards had just 203 receptions for 2004 
2,404 yards and 11 touchdowns. Not exactly anything special considering how dominant he was in college. Number 5. JJ Stokes A standout at UCLA, Stokes had one of the greatest college seasons you'll ever see. In 1993, he was a consensus All-American, named to the first team All-Pac-10, and he was the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year. During that season, Stokes recorded 83 receptions for 1,181 yards and 17 touchdowns. Simply one of the greatest college seasons ever for a pass catcher. Stokes was taken 10th overall by the San Francisco 49ers in 1995, joining a team led by Steve Young and the GOAT of wide receivers Jerry Rice. However, Stokes was never able to transform into a superstar. He surpassed 700 receiving yards twice, but that was it. He played briefly for the Jaguars and the Patriots in 2003, winning a Super Bowl 38 ring with Tom Brady and company. Stokes, technically speaking, went out as a Super Bowl champion. Good on him, but he was supposed to be a perennial pro bowler. It just never worked out that way. Number 4. Mike Williams The Los Angeles Chargers have their own stud wide receiver in Mike Williams. But 12 years before he was drafted, the Detroit Lions selected a guy with the same name. That Mike Williams was taken 10th overall by the Lions in 2005. Williams was a superstar at USC, earning a consensus All-American selection in 2003, while being named to the first team All-Pac-10 that same year. Williams had recorded over 80 receptions, more than 1,200 yards, and double-digit touchdowns in each of his two college seasons. He certainly looked like the next big thing at wide receiver. However, Williams was ineligible for the 2004 draft due to a controversy about his eligibility. The following year, the Lions took a chance on Williams and it didn't pay off. Williams played two seasons with the Lions but never caught more than 29 passes in a single year, and he only recorded a total of two touchdowns. He played briefly for the Oakland Raiders, Tennessee Titans, and Seattle Seahawks. But same thing, he just never broke out, and Williams was out of the NFL following the 2011 season. He tried out for the CFL, but that didn't work out either. Number 3. Peter Warwick You couldn't ask for much more from the Florida State wideout. The man was an unstoppable force during his time with the Seminoles. He was a consensus All-American in 1998 and 99, and he was named to the first team All-SEC three times. He was also an elite special teams return weapon. He led Florida State to a 2000 Sugar Bowl victory over Virginia Tech, where he was named MVP. Everything was pointing towards a beautiful career in the NFL. The Bengals drafted him fourth overall in 2000, and he spent five years with the organization. However, his only somewhat impactful season was in 2003, when he had 79 receptions for 819 yards and 7 touchdowns. Other than that, his numbers were never really that good. He was on the 2005 Seattle Seahawks team that reached Super Bowl 40, but was out of the NFL shortly after. He tried out for the CFL Indoor Football League and Continental Indoor Football League, but unfortunately, to no avail. Number 2. Justin Blackman A lot of the time, a wide receiver prospect is practically a sure thing to succeed in the NFL. You just felt like that was the case with Justin Blackman, the Oklahoma State product whom the Jacksonville Jaguars drafted 5th overall in 2012. It was hard for anybody to complain about the pick at the time. He won two Paul Warfield trophies. He was named a unanimous All-American twice, and he was named the 2010 Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. The Jaguars drafted Blaine Gabbert with their first overall pick the year before, so Jacksonville fans had every reason to get excited about their young QB wideout duo. But in short time, they realized that it wasn't going to work out. Blackman was arrested for drunk driving before his rookie season. Before his sophomore year, he was suspended for violating the NFL substance abuse policy. He was suspended a second time during the season as well. He sadly couldn't stay out of trouble, and he was arrested again for drunk driving in December 2015 and was never reinstated by the NFL. He played just 20 games over two seasons with the Jaguars, totaling 93 receptions for 1,280 yards and 6 touchdowns. Number 1. Charles Rogers The Michigan State product had all the makings to be one of the NFL's all-time greats. Rogers listed at 6'3", 220 pounds, had the size and practically every quality you look for in a great wide receiver. Rogers was one of the top college players in the country during his time with the Spartans. Rogers caught 68 passes for 1,351 yards and 13 touchdowns in his final year. He had 27 total TDs in two seasons with the Spartans. And on top of that, Rogers was a 2002 unanimous All-American, and he was named as part of the first team All-Big Ten twice. The Detroit Lions drafted him with the number two pick in 2003, after the Bengals took Carson Palmer with the top selection. Unfortunately, Rogers only played a total of six games through his first two NFL seasons. Having suffered a broken clavicle, that cut his 2003 and four campaigns short. Rodgers was hit with a four-game suspension in 2005 for violating the league's substance abuse policy. In all, he only played 15 games over a three-year span with the Lions, recording a total of 36 receptions for 440 yards and four touchdowns. The Lions released Rodgers in 2006, and he was out of the NFL for good shortly after. He was arrested multiple times after his playing career. It was reported in 2017 that he was working at Uptown Motors in Fort Myers, Florida. Which other wide receivers were great in college but flops in the NFL? Join me in the comments section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post
Warehouse videos every single week. If you want more of me, you should go there. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click right down there. Smash that like button. Subscribe to TPS because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video. Subscribe. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. My knee. My knee.